From Hollywood, California, present Edward G. Robinson with Claire Trevor in a series of powerful dramatic half hours entitled Big Town. Big Town is neither New York, Chicago, St. Louis, nor San Francisco. It is a fictitious city, and all the characters in Big Town are fictitious. Any resemblance of name or place is purely coincidental. But the people in Big Town are the same as the people in every large city. They are real, live, vital human beings with the inevitable problems of life, health, and happiness. They have their moments of... Sorrow. Joy. Hate. Love. Failure. Success. Tears. Laughter. Fear. Hope. Listen, listen. It's Big Town. To portray the leading characters in our story, Big Town, we have chosen Edward G. Robinson with Claire Trevor. Edward G. Robinson plays the part of Steve Wilson, the managing editor of the Illustrated Press. Claire Trevor plays the part of the society editor, who writes under the name of Lorelei. We feel that we could not have made a better choice in the selection of competent artists to play these characters. Edward G. Robinson's talent and personality, fondly remembered by theater goers, won for him enviable fame in numerous stage plays. And the robust characters he brought to life on the screen in Little Caesar, Five Star Final, and Kid Galahad placed him in the very first rank of motion picture stars. Claire Trevor, because of her magnificent performances in Maiden Lane, To Marry With Love, and Dead End, is considered one of the most promising motion picture actresses of the day. And now, for the first time, Edward G. Robinson and Claire Trevor combine their histrionic experience in a radio vehicle that is worthy of their talents. Now our story begins. The Illustrated Press is the biggest newspaper of Big Town. A hustling, bustling, scurrying, hurrying, dashing, slashing madhouse where everyone works at top speed, driven by the sharp tongue of its merciless managing editor, Steve Wilson. Our scene is the newspaper offices of the Illustrated Press. Finish your story, Nick? Just about. Hope the boss likes it. Don't worry, he won't. <laughs> Have you gotten through to Chicago yet? No, the wire's dead. Well, keep calling. Keep hammering that bug. If you don't get through, the boss will fire you. Hey, you plate guys, we've got to make a remake on that front page. Can't stop now. The boss wants the front page pulled back, and that settles it. In his office, away from the noise and clatter of the city room, we find our managing editor, Steve Wilson, affectionately known as the boss of the Illustrated Press. With him is Stanley Peabody, the paper's publisher and major stockholder. Steve Wilson, our circulation jumped 25% last week. My congratulations on that college suicide story. Never mind the congratulations, Mr. Peabody. Getting circulation is my job. That's fine, Steve, but you do more than your job. That's because I'm afraid to be idle. My conscience might catch up with me. Conscience? Yes, conscience. You know, that little something that creeps up on you in the dark. Or do you take sedatives? Hmm. You ought to take a rest. Sure. From you in this newspaper. You know very well, Peabody, if I hid in the North Pole, you'd have me dig up a story on Peary and some Eskimo debutante to build up circulation. You're being unfair. <laughs> That's a laugh. How can anybody be unfair to you? You start with two strikes against you. Frankly, I don't know what ails you. You ail me. You and your sanctimonious attitudes. You and your petty larceny morals. Now, get out of here. I've got a dirty job to do, and it's costing you money. Come in. Oh, it's you, Lorelei. I want to see you. How are you, Lorelei? Fine, thanks. All right, Steve. Let's have lunch. I'll see you at one o'clock. Okay. Now, look here, Lorelei. What kind of a story is this that you brought in on Mrs. Ratsmith? Well, Steve, I told our readers what I thought they'd like to know. Eureka! A Daniel come to the fourth estate. Ring the bells in the church steeple. At last, I found somebody who knows what the readers want to know. What decent readers want to know? Curly locks, there are no decent or indecent readers of a paper. They're all indecent. Newspaper readers want news. They want to tear down the walls around other people's lives. They want to turn the bedroom upside down looking for blessed events. They want the lowdown. They want the dirt. 
They want the news. You'll have to get yourself a new girl, Steve. Eavesdropping on the dirt, as you call it, is not for my appetite. I'm not a scavenger. I'm a newspaper woman. Well, the most important job you have is to tell Mrs. O'Grady, not the colonel's lady, how the other half lives. But why should Mrs. O'Grady be interested in... Why? Something? Why? I'll tell you why. Because Mrs. O'Grady, on a Monday morning, wants to feel that virtue is its own reward, even if it's not. She wants to feel so much better than Mrs. Van Rensselaer, who's nursing a headache from the night before. She wants... Oh, why do I go on like this? Because you like it. Because it makes you feel as if you were running the universe. Well, as a matter of fact, you're not. You're not even running your paper. It's running you. What's the matter with my story? I'll show you what's the matter with it. Here, listen to it. Mrs. Leland Ratsmith of Alaska, San Francisco, and New York, socialite, announces the engagement of her daughter, Patricia, to Richard C. Huntley, son of the president of the Huntley Bank. It's a simple announcement of an engagement. Yes, but you missed a great story in that simple engagement piece. Now, wait a minute. Hello? Uh, uh, hello, Miss Foster? Yes, Mr. Wilson. Uh, get me Charlie Blake in the morgue. I'll show you the real story. Mm, someone's going to get hurt. Yes, but you'll find it in the news. Hello, boss. You wanted me? Uh, Charlie, uh, get me all the clips you can find on Pittsburgh Lill of Nome, Alaska. Yeah. And uh, Mrs. Leland Ratsmith of San Francisco, New York. Got that? Yeah, I'll dig it up right away. Good. Pittsburgh Lill, Mrs. Radsmith. What has Pittsburgh Lill to do with Mrs. Radsmith? Laura Lai, when you first came to me out of social work, you promised that you would get news. The lowdown. Society news. Yes, but I didn't promise to take innocent people and hold up their lives to ridicule, to shame, to satisfy readers whose only interest is the misfortune of others. A good speech. Oh. Yes, for a social worker, but a bad one for a reporter. Cut it down, you might have something there. Okay, I'll give it to the rewrite man. What? Oh, come in, Charlie. I got those pits out of the morgue for you. Oh, good. Let's see him, Charlie. Bring him over here. Here they are. I'm going to show Lorelei the pretty pictures. <laughs> Anything else, boss? No. Right. Now, Lorelei, we're through with Goldilocks and the Three Bears. We're down to news. Here. See this little picture of the dame in a star-spangled dress? Sweet, nice, and demure? Yes. Well, that's Pittsburgh Lil, once known from Nome to the Barbary Coast as the most notorious proprietress of creep joints, Chinese fantan emporiums, saloons, and other delicacies calculated to amuse and entertain the suckers. Why? That looks like Mrs... You're right. It's Mrs. Leland Ratsmith, who this day announces in your elegant column this simple engagement of her charming daughter to Mr. Huntley, son of San Francisco's wealthiest family. Well, what else could I say? What else? <laughs> what else? <laughs> now, wait a minute. Here. Here. Here, look at this picture. See what this is? It's a patrol wagon. Yeah. See who's leading those girls into that wagon? Mrs. Ratsmith, yeah. all right. Well, I'll read you the clip. The notorious Pittsburgh Lil this day... You want me to write these things about Mrs. Radsmith? You want me to dig up the past of a woman who's long ago lived down her days in Nome, who's a respectable, kindly woman? I want the news, and that's news. Oh, that's murder. Is the daughter of Mrs. Radsmith responsible for her mother's past? Do you know what you're doing? You're taking a young, innocent girl on the threshold of her greatest happiness and breaking her heart. That's not news. That's the greatest news in the whole world. It's the kind of news that'll get circulation, plenty of circulation, and that will get advertising. Mr. Peabody will be pleased as he counts the money for paid space. Mr. Peabody? Yes, Mr. Peabody, your benefactor and mine. Your pal who gives you his check every day for services rendered. The little tin guard of the Illustrated Press, the big ball. You'll get a bonus. I tell you, it's the hottest story in town, and you can get it, Lorelei. So, this is what they call the noble profession of journalism. Mm. The fourth estate. Noble, my foot. <laughs> Steve, you let this paper seduce you. Oh, Lorelei. There are still signs about you of what once must have been a nice person. Really? But you've buried it on that dirt. You like to call it news. Well, of course but it's... all you do is make people unhappy, drive them to suicide, spread hate. But there's God's compensation. You don't escape, Steve. Slowly, it's destroying you. There'll come a time when you'll have to reach up to touch bottom. I'm ashamed of myself, and I'm ashamed of you. Well, I'm too old to be ashamed and too hungry to be an idealist. Lorelei, I've offered you a great opportunity, one I would have been glad to take. I'm going to show you the news the way it should be written. Hot, burning, sizzling. Yes. The stuff that makes the readers plunk down their pennies and yell for more editions. Oh. From Honky Tonk in Alaska to Penthouse in Park Avenue. No. Now there's a headline for you that'll make them buy the Illustrated Press. I told you this was an opportunity. Well, it's too big for you, sister. It's my side. You're going to cover it? I'm going right to Pittsburgh, Lil. I haven't had my teeth in a first-class story in five years. 
Here comes Steve Wilson to the rescue. For God, for country, and for the Illustrated Press. Mrs. Radsmith, Mr. Wilson is waiting in the library to see you. I'll be right down. Mr. Wilson? Well, an excellent memory, Lil. To what do I owe this unexpected raid? Raid? Well, what do you call it? A visit. Just a visit for old Lang Syne. What are you doing these days, Steve? Still snooping? Ah, uh -huh. harsh word, Lil. Harsh word. You never deserved any orchids. Ah, but you do. Tempest fugit. Time flies, but treats women very kindly. <laughs> it's the same Steve I knew in Nome. The same technique with the ladies. Now, wait a minute. Now, don't tell me that I haven't learned anything in all this time. Oh, I wouldn't be that uncomplimentary, Steve. You've learned a great deal. You've learned how to turn garbage into print at a great profit. Oh, now, is that the way to treat an old friend? You're about as friendly as a rattlesnake. What? Yes, or should I apologize to the rattlesnake? At least he gives his victims warning. He rattles. Ah, now you're being very unkind. I'm just a poor newspaper man trying to get along, Mrs. Ratsmith. Pittsburgh Lil to you. And I know what you came here for. Clairvoyant. Yes, I had a feeling you'd show up. Now, I don't want to waste any time, Steve. You're after news and I'm going to give it to you. Straight from the shoulder. <laughs> I'll bet it'll be good. It'll be straight. Steve. If you print a word about my past or anything which will interfere with my girl's happiness, I'll kill you. Thanks, say, hey, I'll spread that all over my paper. You've been digging dirt for a long time. Why, in Nome, you're always the first to stick your nose into a garbage can. You're right, but I came out with a story. Sure, so that nobody in Alaska would talk to you. Not even your readers. Yes, but they called me a great newspaper man. They called you a sneak, a spy, a double-crosser. I saved your neck more than once, and you hide, too. Well, thanks, Leo. You're welcome. But the killing still goes. Listen, Steve. Patricia's the only thing that I've got out of all my knocking around and being kicked around. It was for her that I turned my life inside out. Why do you think I like sitting around at tea parties with a lot of women with fallen arches, talking about their husbands as though they were plaster saints? Say, now look here. Will you will you write that story, Lil? I'll make a bargain. Get out, Steve. Get out. There's no bargain. You came here for news and I gave it to you. I've got it. Managing editor of the Illustrated Press, Steve Wilson, dies getting the news. What a head. What a head. Yes. And here's another head for your tombstone. Where there's dirt, there's Wilson. We bring down the curtain for a brief intermission on Big Town, starring Edward G. Robinson with Claire Trevor. We return now to Big Town. Big Town throbbing with life. Hordes of workers emerging from stores, factories, and office buildings. Hurrying to streetcars, elevators, and subways. Eager to get home to husbands, wives, and children. Yet stopping for the evening's paper, the subject of after-dinner gossip. x ray x -ray, read all about Pittsburgh Lil! Mrs. Radsmith's exposed to Pittsburgh Lil! x ray x, -ray, x, -ray, x, -ray, x -ray. Pittsburgh Lil comes to life as Mrs. Radsmith! x ray x -ray, read all about it! Steve. Stop playing, Steve. You're in danger. Now, don't tell me. Tell the readers of the Illustrated Press. You like music? Mm, I like the Lorelei when I heard Schumann Hank sing it. Stop playing your own funeral march. Why not? I ought to have something to do with my own funeral. Mrs. Ratsmith wrote my epitaph. You object to my funeral march. Say, who's flying this corpse anyway? Okay, laugh it off. But she's coming here to kill you. Well, then make the head read, uh, Managing Editor Killed for Publishing the News. <laughs> oh, and wait. Here, Lorelei. Here's a first-class picture of the prospective corpse. 
with love and kisses. It looks better on the piano than it will in print. I take it. It's an exclusive. The respectable housewives on 10th Avenue will eat it up. Oh, uh, arrange with Hunter to have two photographers at my funeral. I want to be caught coming and going. <laughs> well, if your funeral is a success, I'll get you a full page in the Rotor Review. Will you, Lorelei? Sure. Steve Wilson at the age of two. Yes, when he still was young and innocent. And Steve Wilson being confirmed. When he had faith. In himself. Steve God. Wilson at college. Steve Wilson at his desk in the old Herald. Steve Wilson in Nome, Alaska. Notice the look of departing innocence. That look? Yes. That isn't innocence departing. That's the smell of my first big story entering my nostrils. Oh, Steve, you're impossible. I hate possible people. Yes, but what you don't seem to realize is that a life is more important than a front page story. Even if it is yours. Hey. But I doubt if a dull life is more important than an exciting story. I believe you really mean that. You'd rather spread pictures of a killing on your front page, get more and more morons to read the sheet and bolster up your circulation than, than save a life. Ah, oh, Laura, lie. Stop preaching, will you? The hottest story in America is on the street. Now I want another lead story. Uh, <laughs> tell of the great mother love Mrs. Ratsmith has for her daughter. A love that may lead to murder. Milk it dry. It's disgusting. Goodbye, Mr. Wilson. Yeah, no, no, no. Wait a minute, please. Come back here now. Tell me. What uh, makes you go on these soul-saving tours every once in a while? Well, you can't see a man you have some respect for turn mean and cheap before your very eyes and do nothing about it. Well, resigning wouldn't help me. Well, I'm afraid if I don't, something might happen to me. <laughs> oh, nothing will ever happen to you, Lorelei. Girls like you don't run for the fire escape at the first alarm. You're a newspaper woman. You love getting the news. Yes, but not dirt. No, but getting it, writing it. It grips you like some kind of sinning. Yeah, that's a great speech, boss. With a little fixing, I could do a yarn on that. Now, don't tell me you've got a hot thought. Sure, last words of Editor Wilson. I'd like to write your obituary while you still can edit it. Good. Look, you can use the typewriter in my study. Oh, allow me to show you to the door. Thank you. And uh, don't forget to leave room for my picture. In my heart, kind sir. Here we are. I must have tonight off, if you please. Oh, boyfriend get into town? <laughs> no, I have not boyfriend, Mr. Wilson. <laughs> I have my art. Oh, and great, too. <laughs> Queen of my heart and stomach. You know, that pickle tongue was something to write about. Mmm. See, that's an idea. I'll give it to the recipe department. Mr. Wilson, my art is not cooking. It no? is the theater. Theater. I play for the Scandinavian Domestic Dramatic Athletic Club, the Doll's House. Now, now, wait a minute, Mina. Say that again. I say I play for the Scandinavian Domestic Dramatic Athletic Club, the Doll's House. And don't tell me you play... Ah, I play the doll. Jerusalem, I've been hiding a doozy in my kitchen. I would like to go right away. I, I must rehearse. Oh, no, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Come back here, Minna. Look here. How, how would you like to try a little bit of it on me, hmm? You like Ibsen? Like Ibsen? Say, I'll accompany you on the piano with Gris. Uh, you know, uh, there she is going to leave her husband. Sure. Uh, you remember there she tells him she has lived with him for 15 years. That's right. And she don't even know him. Mm -hmm. Then she cries, Torval. Torval, yeah. It was then it dawned on me that for eight years I have been living here with a strange man and had borne him three children. Oh, I can't bear to think of it. I could tear myself to little bed. Bravo, bravo. That's great, Benham. <laughs> Listen, darling, how, how, how would you like to have your picture alongside of Greta Garbo in the Sunday paper? Greta Garbo? Mm -hmm. I go answer the bell. Oh, someone is always interrupting, genius. And then I must put on my costume for the play. <laughs> is somebody coming? Oh, yes. A uh, Mrs. Ratsmith. 
sure in here. Hello, uh, operator. Uh, give me spring, 6789. This is Wilson. Uh, give me the dramatic department. Hello, Dudley. Say, I, I want you to cover the Scandinavian Domestic Dramatic and Athletic Club play. Oh, it's an opening. Who's in it? Why, the great Minner. Well, oh, the Seba show. Well, you can always see that. Say, this is a story of a lifetime. All the Swedish servants doing Ibsen. Well, it's human interest with a capital U. Oh, let Sammy review the Seba show. Sure, he's an office boy. That's why I do the Seba justice. Yeah, well, give him a byline. Let me see. Call it uh, Mr. Moskowitz goes to the show. Uh, goodbye. I've uh, got company. Good evening, Mrs. Rashmith. Pittsburgh will for you. <laughs> well, what's in the name? You ought to know. That's your slogan. Names. Publish names. No matter where it falls and whom it hurts. Names. Well, think of your own right name. Or not the one they call you. The one you were baptized with. I'm going to kill you. Now, wait. Not with that pistol. Small and pearly and delicate. Oh, that's feminine. You know, I always thought of dying with a grand gesture. You know, Lil, sort of rustler or bandit fashion, spurs and... Oh, yes, you know, my yellow boots on, looking into the muzzle of a forty-four. Oh, Lil, how can you do me like that? A, a teeny-weeny pistol, a fine end for a growing boy. This one shoots, Wilson. You're not going to talk me out of this. Oh, don't I know it? Then maybe you know that you deserve it. I'm beginning to realize it. It's too late to begin. And here I believe it was never too late to mend. It's too late to recall the shouting newsboys. It's too late to mend the hurt you've done two young innocent people whose hearts you broke because of your dirty sheet. Now a paper lives by its circulation, Mrs. Ratsmith. And by the gentlemen of the press who gather the dirt. And how many homes it can wreck and how many lives it can make miserable. Well, the public must have its food for talk. It's scandal. Even if you have to kill somebody to give it to them. Oh, we haven't stooped that low. Low. Why, you commit murder every day. But you never stand trial for it. The real murderer takes his chances with the electric chair. Why, he's a sport compared to you. He takes a chance. Oh, I've taken chances, too. Now, for instance, right now, with you and that gun, with a nervous finger toying with the trigger. May I do the editing? Why, of with... course. Pulling the trigger. <laughs> oh, my God. You, you've done it, Lil. What happened? Someone shot Mr. Wilson. You're bleeding, Steve. Let me see. You killed Mr. Wilson. You killed Mr. Wilson. Oh, he's dead. Mr. Wilson is dead. Not quite. Steve, are you all right? Oh, sure. She was, she was out of practice. Let's call it all a mistake, Lil. You could have avoided that, Steve. Oh, no. I, I never avoid anything. Not even my own funeral. Miss Lorelei, if you should want me, Mr. Wilson knows my address. Steve, I'll call a doctor. Oh, no, that's, that's the second thing to think about. First call the city desk. No, Minna, get an ambulance. No, no, no. You, you would think of that. What? Get an ambulance with every reporter training on it and lose this exclusive story for the sheet? What would Peabody say? Operator, spring 6789. I'm so sorry, Mr. Wilson. Well, I, I'm sorry, too, Minna, to make you disappoint your audience. <laughs> That's all right, Mr. Wilson. I'm glad she didn't kill you. Hello, city desk. Re Laurel, I talking. Re repeat after me. Steve Wilson, managing editor of the Illustrated Press, was shot today. Steve Wilson, managing editor of the Illustrated Press, was shot today. By a mysterious stranger who disappeared. By a mysterious stranger who disappeared. After the shooting. After the shooting. What about her name, Steve? Oh, no. No names. Just a mysterious stranger. No names. Well, what's in the name? Between very good friends. Courage, Laura Life, never go unappreciated. The lady called on personal business. My affairs are not fit reading for our circulation. That's all, city desk. I go get the doctor. Oh, no, 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 Mina. You, you, you got your art. Steve Wilson, you're impossible. I hate possible people. They're always doing the thing you, you expect them to do. Well, that's a relief at times. You can at least find them without a bullet wound in their arm. You think it will leave a scar? Ah, oh, don't worry. Not where anybody can see it. 
just me. Yes, just you. Good. And maybe it will serve to remind me that some things are better left unprinted. That's learning things the hard way. Maybe. Lorelei, I hope you will always treasure that photograph I gave you, just in case. No, I will. I'll file it. Oh, no. It's yours now. With love and kisses. Be a memory book. Exclusive? Exclusive. Brings down the curtain on the first episode of Big Town, starring Edward G. Robinson with Claire Trevor. Next week, at this same time, Edward G. Robinson with Claire Trevor brings us the second episode in the series of powerful dramatic half-hours entitled Big Town. Carlton Cadell speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.